Today we're going to be working on solving equations. Let's start by looking at one of the simplest type of equations, one-step equations involving adding and subtracting. So what is an equation? In math, an equation is a statement that contains an equal sign, and it must be balanced. That is, the expressions on both sides of the equal sign must total the same amount. So if we had 4 plus 3 is equal to 5 plus 2, that's an equation, since both sides total 7. But this is algebra. Shouldn't we be trying to find the value of an unknown? Well, we could have the equation x plus 3 is equal to 5 plus 2, where x represents the number that would make both sides of the equation equal. Remember, the green rod is used to represent an unknown quantity. In this case, it represents an x. Before we get started, let's go ahead and simplify this equation to x plus 3 is equal to 7. Now, how do we find the value of x? Well, we can think of an equation as a balance. If we want to keep the balance level, whatever we need to do to one side, we have to do to the other. The same is true for our equation. Since we want to find the value of x, we need to get it by itself. Therefore, we need to remove three units from both sides of the equation, and that would leave us with x is equal to 4. I bet you're saying to yourself that that seems like a lot of work for something that was obvious. Well, what we're actually doing is providing you with the tools to help you solve more complex problems, such as 6 times the quantity 3x plus 5 equals 3 fourths x plus 16. So let's continue with the basics, so later on we can get to problems that are a lot more fun to solve. Let's look back at the last problem. To solve it, we subtracted 3 from each side, but was that our only option? No, we could have added negative 3 to each side. On the balance, that would have given us x plus 3 zero pairs is equal to 4 plus another 3 zero pairs, or x equals 4. What matters is that we need to isolate the variable that we're solving for. Our golden rule for this is whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So let's look at some other examples. 32 is equal to x minus 7.5. I prefer to rewrite this as 32 is equal to x plus negative 7.5. So what we need to do is get the x by itself. To do that, we need to add 7.5 to each side of the equation, and that would give us 39.5 is equal to x. Or we could just say x is equal to 39.5. To check that answer, we would substitute 39.5 in for the x in the original equation. And since 39.5 minus 7.5 is 32, our solution checks. So let's try a few problems. x plus 5 and a quarter equals negative 10. Pause the video and try the problem on your own. Then unpause the video and we'll go over it together. We want to get the x by itself, so we need to add negative 5 and a quarter to both sides of the equation. And that would leave us with x is equal to negative 15 and a quarter. It's always a good habit to check your answers. So we will substitute negative 15 and a quarter in for x. And since negative 15 and a quarter plus 5 and a quarter is negative 10, our problem checks. Now let's look at the problem x minus negative 6 equals 20. Again, pause the video and try the problem on your own. To solve this, I'm first going to rewrite the subtraction problem as adding the opposite. So that would give us x plus 6 is equal to 20. Next, we subtract 6 from both sides of the equation, leaving us with x equals 14. Let's do a quick check. 14 minus negative 6 is equal to 14 plus 6, which is equal to 20. 20 equals 20. Our problem checks. Okay, let's try one more problem. 8 minus x equals negative 40. Once more, pause the video and try it on your own. To solve this, I'm going to rewrite the problem as 8 plus negative x equals negative 40. We'll add negative 8 to both sides of the equation, leaving us with negative x equals negative 48. We're not done yet. We need to find the answer for positive x. Remember, the negative sign can be thought of as taking the opposite. So the opposite of negative x is x, and the opposite of negative 48 is 48. So x is equal to 48. Let's check this. 8 minus 48 equals negative 40. So both sides of the equation equal negative 40, and the problem checks. To solve these problems, we're using the additive inverse property. That is, any number plus its opposite will equal 0. 
If we were to write this in general terms, we would say a plus negative a equals zero, or we could have said negative a plus a equals zero. Remember, whenever we are solving an equation, our goal is to isolate the variable we're solving. When doing this, we need to keep the equation balanced by performing the same operation on both sides of the equation.